In this video, I'm going to be talking about the top 10 biggest, scariest, weirdest, and stupid conspiracy theories about Pokemon. Pokemon has been around for over 25 years and has to have some of the most significant conspiracy theories of any show out there. Why is Ash still 10? Is Giovanni Ash's real father? What happened to Gudra? People eat Pokemon? Well, that one's actually real. I'll go over all that goodness. So let's start with number 10. The anime was supposed to be one season. This one is less of a conspiracy, but more of an unknown fact. As you may know, we have over 1,000 episodes in Pokemon now. But imagine if all we got was the original series where he loses the league and that's it. No more Ash Ketchum. That was the CEO of Pokemon Ishihara's original plan with the anime. But after the delay of Gold and Silver, we got Orange Islands as a filler series and the rest is history. Number 9. Ditto was a failed attempt at making Mew. This is a pretty popular theory that has been around ever since the beginning of Pokemon. We all know the story of the scientists that were studying Mew who wanted to make the strongest Pokemon in the world, and they ended up creating Mewtwo. However, was Ditto a failed clone of Mewtwo? Cause there's no way a perfect Mewtwo was created on the first try. I mean, let's look at the similarities. They are both pink, they both can transform into any Pokemon, they both look kinda slimy, and they even share the same shiny color. Hmm. Mewtwo was created on Cinnabar Island, where guess who was running all over the place? Yes. Ditto. That means they must have failed many attempts, and this might be the reason it is super common in the game as well. To me, this seems like too much evidence suggesting that Ditto is in fact a clone Pokemon from Mew or Mewtwo. Number 8. Arcanine is a legendary Pokemon. Honestly, I would have loved for this to be true, even though it makes absolutely no sense. Many people speculate whether or not Arcanine was really meant to be a legendary because of its unusually high stats. Some suggested that Arcanine was part of the legendary trio, even in the Pokédex, it says Arcanine is in fact a legendary Pokémon. And we all can't forget that time when we saw that picture in the Pokémon Center of Episode 2. Pokémon must have made some last minute choices, probably since it wouldn't make any sense for there to be three legendary birds and then just a dog. Yeah, from now on, I'm calling Arcanine a legendary Pokémon. Number 7. The original ending for the anime. The original ending for the anime was quite weird. This ending was written by Takashi Shudo, who was the chief writer of the Pokémon anime anime from 1997 to 2002. His idea for the ending was to have Ash as an old man looking back at the past when he was a little boy traveling around the world of Pokemon and making friends along his journey. However, old man Ash apparently doesn't have these experiences with friends as he used to, and his thinking about this turns back the clock and we get Ash being yelled at by his mom waking him up. And here we have the first episode. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but the entire point of this was to show the meaning of existence itself and how to coexist with other again. Not exactly the most fitting for Pokemon, especially if you consider its primary audience, but honestly, I'd be down for an ending like that. Number 6. Why is Ash still 10? There are many conspiracy theories out there that explain why Ash is still 10. Some think it's because the anime has slowed time where everything ages at a very slow rate. Others think he has arbitrary age, which means, for example, when you reach 10, this is a milestone rather than a sign of growth. Like how all adults in Pokemon are 20 and all old people are 50. Even though Ash should be at least 25, he hasn't earned the position of more than 10. Lastly, and this one is my favorite, and that is Ash's eternal youth. And this one basically means he can live forever. I think it's because he saw ho in the first episode, and in Ho's Pokédex, it states that if anyone sees its wings, it grants them eternal happiness. And Ash's eternal happiness is being 10. But we all know it's because Ash is Pokemon's second mascot and he needs to be young for their audience. Number 5. People eat Pokemon. Is this really a conspiracy theory? Because in the episode where Ash is on the big boat, we can clearly see him eating chicken and whatever that is. We know that animals don't exist in the anime, so what type of meat is that? Ah, uh, something's going on here. And here we see them obviously looking at a chopped up Magikarp, so they must eat Pokemon. I mean, who knows what they put in those bowls of Pokemon food? That's not Broxo made cooking without a little Geo, dude. Number 4. Cubone and Kangaskhan are related. At first, this may sound a little strange, but trust me, once you see the image, it all makes sense. Cubone, as we know, wears the skull of its dead mom. 
That's cool and all, but why is it oddly shaped like a Kangaskhan? Kangaskhan even carries a little dude in his pouch that is also oddly shaped like Cubone. But this is where it gets a little weird because mathematically, those look like horns and Kangaskhan has ears and the eyes are a little too far backward. However, in Pokemon Evolution, body shapes are different. Maybe if the Pokemon dies, the skull changes a bit to match with the baby Kangaskhan's head. I don't know, man. This evidence is stacking up and I think this is a cross Pokemon Evolution. Number 3, The Pokemon War. This one's gotta be my personal favorite on the list, but it all started when Lieutenant Surge said there was supposedly a big Pokemon War. The war that he's referring to dates a little before Gary was born, and this theory would explain why there aren't many father figures in Pokemon. This war was very big, claiming many human and Pokemon lives, which is nothing new in Pokemon we have seen death before. The war was fought by humans and Pokemon alike, as well as some man-made weapons of destruction. Gary's dad could have died fighting in this war, which explains why he was raised by Professor Oak. Again, I feel like that makes perfect sense and I would honestly love to see a giant Pokemon war in the games or in the show. Number 2, Ash Ketchum and Akoma. This is the most darkest theory by far, because if true, then all of Ash's accomplishments are for nothing and all of your childhood is ruined. People think that in the first episode when Ash gets attacked by a horde of Spearow and Pikachu uses Thunder that creates a big explosion, it knocks Ash out and he falls into a coma. Everything we see from then on, when he wakes up, is all in Ash's head. This could explain the reason of why Ash doesn't age, because he's been in this coma for over 25 years. This could also explain why Ash can't die in the anime, because it's all a dream. If true, then everything would be so pointless and stupid, but kind of cool, but still stupid. Pretty much the whole anime would have been for nothing, and no kid watching Pokemon wants to see their hero wake up from a coma at the end of the series. Although, that would be the craziest ending of any TV show of all time. Number 1. Who and where is Ash's father? I saved this one for last since it's a classic. I mean, all of these are classics, but the real OG that is still being talked about to this day is the question, who is Ash's father and where is he? The most popular theory that I heard is it's Giovanni, the head of Team Rocket. Giovanni and Professor Oak actually used to be friends before they went their separate ways. This matters because this might be the reason why Professor Oak is so close to Ash. It's the good son realizes his dad is evil cliche, but I would love to see that. Problem is that Ash's mob would have found out by now and so would Professor Oak. To me, it seems that this would be too unlikely of a coincidence, even for Pokemon. Another theory is that Pikachu is Ash's dad, which sounds ridiculous, and it's confirmed that Pikachu is not in fact Ash's dad, as we've seen from the first episode of Pokemon Journeys. So who is it? We know Ash's dad is confirmed in the anime because of the original series, episode 2, where Delia confirmed it. However, she never stated who it was but she said that he was still on his journey. This means that he is alive and didn't die in the Pokemon War, but left the house to become a Pokemon Master. I don't think Ash's dad is a character we have seen in the anime yet, but is one we will maybe see at the end of Ash's journey where they battle. What do you think about all these theories? I'd say most of them are true. Join my Discord. Bye.